Welcome to episode 4 of this DP Animation Maker series. Today, I will show you how to animate underwater photos, adding bubbles, underwater plants, god rays, and making fish move behind rocks or plants, just like you see in this scene here. I generated this underwater scene with AI, trying to prompt it in a way that gives it more dimension and makes it look more immersive or 3D. It looks better if it's split into three parts which will help us later move the fish behind the rocks or the treasure chest. So, I have the foreground, which includes the rocks, then the middle ground where the treasure chest is, and finally the background, which is far behind. Next, I use Photoshop's generative fill, but you can also use inpainting, to cut and save the rocks separately. Then, I cut out the middle ground and regenerated the missing parts, so I now have only the background to use behind. Now, it's easy to compose everything in DP Animation Maker to create the scene. Open DP Animation Maker, click on Change Background, and add the background image. As you can see, we work from the back to the front. Then, click Import and add the middle ground. Click the Continue button. Then, from the Animation template, select Still Object and click Finish Import. Since the middle ground has the same width and height as the background, it fits perfectly. Next, click Import again, and repeat the steps to add the foreground, the stone on the left. This is saved as a smaller image, so you can resize it, or just move it into the position you want. Then, repeat the process for the last image, the foreground rock on the right. Now, we have reconstructed the layers of the original image, and we can add animation that works between those layers. Let's add an animation. Click on Animated Objects, then scroll down to the Fish category and search for a fish that you like. I am selecting fish number one, then click on Apply Selected Animation, and close the window. Now we have this lonely fish swimming here. You can add a lot of fish to see how it looks on screen, and experiment with how it will look in different areas of the scene. Right now, the fish is in front of the rocks. If I click on the down arrow, it moves behind the rock on the right. If I click the down arrow again, it moves behind the left rock. If I click down once more, it moves behind the treasure chest, which is the middle ground that we save separately. This makes the scene more realistic, with some fish swimming in front of the treasure and others behind it. You can also change the size of the fish, from big to small, depending on your scene, so it fits better. For the number of fish, I'll add just three of this species so we can add other types of fish later. They have some extra add-ons with animations for the program, and I got the extension pack, which includes additional fish and plants. If you have these two, you can find them in the Animated Objects section of the DP extension pack under the Nature and Fish categories. As you can see, I have a few here that I can add and test to see how they look. The extra packs come with more detailed animations for the fish, like showing how the tail moves, along with other movements. However, if you want custom fish, you could create your own animation and import each frame. For this scene, I'll add the yellowtail clownfish since it's cute, and maybe a red betta fish for a pop of color. Even though these fish are really tiny in reality, it works for this tutorial. First, select the red betta fish and move it up using the arrow, so it's on top of everything. I can increase the count to see it better, then move it down so it's just behind the foreground rocks. I'll leave only one red betta fish for now. Next, select the clownfish. You can also use the eye icon to hide or make visible that animation layer. I'll increase the size of the clownfish a little and move it up so it's on top of the middle ground. Let's add another animation. From the standard tab under the light and fire category, we have God Rays. In this case, version 1 will work better. So I apply that animation. Now from the corners, we can adjust it to fit the scene. Since I already have some God Rays in the image, I can match the perspective of those lights. I think this position looks natural. However, it's a little too strong, so I go to the color properties and adjust the translucency to around 83 or maybe 87, which should work well. This will make it more subtle and not distract from the rest of the scene. I should have maybe moved the god rays to be on top of all the animation layers here to make it look even better. Anyway, let's see what else we can add. Go to the water and air category and select bubbles. This will add bubbles to the entire scene but let's see how we can adjust them. Click on the rectangle, and it will show the area where the bubbles appear, which is the size of the background. Now, I have the corners 
where I can drag and adjust it. I'll position it in the bottom left corner and then adjust the size to make the bubbles bigger. Next, with the bubble animation selected, I'll move it down so it looks like the bubbles are coming from behind the rock, making the scene more interesting. I like how this looks. It's nice. Let's go back and add another bubbles animation, but this time I'll leave it for the entire screen. I'll increase the number of bubbles to see them better and move the animation down so it's behind the middle ground, behind the treasure chest. I'll reduce the count a bit and maybe adjust the speed so it moves slower. Play with the settings until it matches the scene you have. Now select the middle ground layer, go to animated brush and choose the wave brush. Click apply selected animation and close the window. In the wave properties, I'll change it so it only affects the previous layer, which in our case is the middle ground. I'll make the brush larger and start painting on the purple plant so it starts moving. The strength of the animation is a bit too high, so I want to make it a little more subtle. I go to the settings and change the amplitude to a value of 9, the speed to around 16, and the wavelength to 39. Now, it seems to move more naturally with a subtle motion, and it has that underwater look. I'm also painting the other purple plant from the right. Maybe we can add some more plants as well. Go to Animated Objects, find the grass category, and select Underwater Plant number 2. Click Apply Selection and close the window. You can resize the plant by dragging it from the corners. I want to place it behind the treasure chest, so I move it under the middle ground layer. Now we have some extra motion in the background. You can add a bunch of plants there if you want. I'll also add underwater plant number three and place it behind the treasure chest, just barely visible on this side. Looks good. Now select the middle ground layer and click on the constructor button. Then click on templates. And here we have a few of them. Find sparkles version three, click load selected, and then close the window. Click on the rectangle so we can move it on top of the coins. Use the corners to resize it so it fits the coins area. That clownfish is getting in my way. It's craving attention. Then click add to add it to the scene. I want to add the sparkles again, but instead of going through the entire constructor process, I'll just right click on the sparkles layer and duplicate it. Then we can edit the particles by clicking on the edit particles button, select the rectangle and move it to cover the coins on the ground. Use the corners to adjust it so it fits the coins, then click finish when you're done. Now we have some sparkling gold coins. Let's add an effect to the entire scene. Go to where it says no effect and select underwater. You'll see how the entire scene moves as if it's underwater, but the effect is a little too strong for this scene. Go to the settings and under amplitude, reduce it to uh, eight. This way, it's still underwater, but the deformation isn't as strong. It depends on how visible you want the effect to be. I think that covers what I wanted to show you. I always forget to save the project, so I'm saving it now at the end. Then, go to the Export menu, select Export to MP4 Format, give it a name, and press Save. Change the quality to Max Quality, and for resolution, choose Custom to fit the background image size, or pick what works best for you. For the duration, I'll set it to 60 seconds, and let's try 30 frames. Click Export, and wait for it to finish. That's all for today. Please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. I didn't see a lot of interest in the last episode, so if you're not interested in this software and would prefer to focus on something else, like Kling AI or something else, let me know. All the images used in this video are free to download from my Discord. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.